मैं सर प्रयाग पटेल वर्किंग एज असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर इन आई टी आई सी डी डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ एल जी इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग एंड टेक्नोलॉजी इन एडीएस सब्जेक्ट यूनिट नंबर टू एनालिसिस ऑफ अल्गोरिदम इन सेकेंड यूनिट इन टूडेज वीडियो लेक्चर आई विल डिस्कस अबाउट द बेस्ट केस वर्स्ट केस एंड एवरेज केस एनालिसिस नाउ टॉपिक्स टू बी कवर्ड इन यूनिट नंबर टू कंसिडर वन बाय वन फर्स्ट इज एनालिसिस ऑफ अल्गोरिदम सेकेंड एफिशियंसी ऑफ अल्गोरिदम नेक्स्ट कंसिडर एज अ एवरेज केस बेस्ट केस एंड वर्स्ट केस एनालिसिस नेक्स्ट एसिम्पोटिक नोटेशन यूज फॉर एनालिसिस ऑफ अल्गोरिदम देन एनालाइजिंग कंट्रोल स्टेटमेंट then sorting algorithms and analysis like bubble sort selection sort insertion sort cell sort and heap sort and last consider is the sorting in linear time bucket sort radix sort and counting sort and also consider the amortize analysis now in unit number 2 we discuss this all topic one by one first consider the analysis of algorithm now what is the analysis of algorithm analysis of an algorithm means calculating or predicting the resources that the algorithm requires means how many number of resources or how many time how many number of resources you require for your execution of algorithm is called the analysis of algorithm two most important resources are computing time and storage space means consider as a time complexity and space complexity why analysis is required we already discussed analysis means time complexity and space complexity but why we require the analysis by analyzing some of the candidate algorithm for a problem the most efficient one can be easily identified so here we can say that you can identify algorithm using the analysis which one is best algorithm or better algorithm for your any problem now how analysis is done for analysis purpose you have a two a technique or two approach for analysis of algorithm first consider as a empirical approach consider as a posterior approach and second consider as a theor theoretical approach consider as a priori approach so consider empirical approach here consider the empirical approach for your problem is the practice of using the empirical method to study the behavior of algorithms the practice combine the algorithm development and experimentation means in empirical approach we can say the practical approach so here consider the two part development and experimentation means here consider the implementation of your algorithm in empirical approach means you design your algorithm then apply this algorithm and analyze it second technique is theoretical approach theoretical approach determine the mathematically the resources needed by each algorithm means use the algorithm instead of an implementation means in theoretical approach you can simply consider as a you design algorithm and theoretically you check this algorithm analysis and in first approach you can design algorithm then practically you can implement that algorithm on system and check the analysis of algorithm now consider efficiency of algorithm now how you can check the efficiency of algorithm the efficiency of algorithm can be specified using the time complexity and space complexity here consider first as a time complexity time complexity means the amount of time taken by an algorithm to run means analyze that the algorithm is slower or faster so time complexity identify algorithm speed slow speed or fast speed now consider second as a space complexity for efficiency of algorithm so space complexity means the amount of space miss memory taken by an algorithm means analyze that an algorithm require more or less space so using these two factor you can analyze your algorithm now for analysis of algorithm for find the time complexity of algorithm you can consider time complexity and space complexity but here we discuss about the time complexity main factor is time complexity so for find the time complexity main target is find the frequency count 
so frequency count means the frequency count is a count that denotes how many time particular statement is executed for calculating the time complexity we use the frequency count now consider one example in this example consider one code and for this code you can find the frequency count for this code so first is integer a equal to 0 second for i equal to 1 i less or equal to n i plus plus in for loop consider the one statement a equal to a plus i and last consider the print percentage d a so here consider this code for frequency count so first in frequency count you can simply say that frequency count means find the how many number of times particular statement is repeated or executed so here consider integer a equal to 0 means assignment statement assignment statement initially here consider execute only one time so consider one as your frequency count now for the for loop in for loop there are three statement first is initialization i equal to 1 then condition i less or equal to n then increment operation i plus plus so here consider in initialization done for one time now condition check i less or equal to n how many times this condition will be checked so here consider n plus one time because here n time your condition is satisfied one time your condition will be wrong so that why we consider as a n plus one time for your condition check then increment operation how many time your increment operation is done increment operation is done for n time so here we can individually say that for for loop i equal to one one time i less or equal to n n plus one time and i plus plus execute for n times so in this for loop you can consider all the three component or you can consider maximum component out of these three so that's why we consider here only maximum component out of these three means n plus one now in for loop one statement are there a equal to a plus i so here for this statement consider how many times this statement will be executed here n time your condition will be satisfied so a equal to a plus i statement executed for n times then after after the for loop one print statement is there and print statement execute only one time because this is a out of for loop so this all consider as a frequency count line by line now consider the frequency count or total frequency count equal to t of n equal to addition of this all the component so one by one line you can consider the frequency count then addition of this all count frequency count consider as your final frequency count so t of n equal to 1 plus n plus 1 plus n plus 1 so total we can consider as a 2n plus 3 now 2n plus 3 consider as your frequency count now how we can find the your complexity from the frequency count so here consider the n term means here consider 2n as a term of n so in this term 2 consider as a constant then highest power of n consider as a n raised to 1 so your complexity considered as a big O of n for this example of frequency count. Now next consider as a linear search. What is linear search? Suppose you are given a jar containing some business card. In this jar consider many business cards are there. Now you want to find some business card from this jar. You are asked to determine whether the name Mukesh Ambani is in the jar means Mukesh Ambani's business card is available in this jar or not and find this business card. To do this, you decide to simply go through all the cards one by one. You can check card one by one sequentially. It's called the linear search. You can execute your sequence by one by one in order so this is called the linear search how long this takes so that's why we can say that for find the muke sambani card you require the how many number of comparison so maximum number of comparison means size of your input means number of card consider as a maximum number of comparison can we determine by how many cards are in the jar so consider the size of input now consider the in linear search. Linear search is a method for finding the particular value from the given list. The algorithm check each element one at a time in sequence until the desired element is found. 
linear search is the simplest searching algorithm it is a special case of brute force technique means simply sequential technique now consider the example of the linear search search for one in a given array here array consider as a 2 9 3 1 8 five element in a array now you if you want to find the one from this array then how you can perform the linear search operation on this array comparing value of ith index with the given element one by one until we get the required element or end of the array if you find the element from the array then stop your process otherwise you can perform the operation for n number of elements which are available in the array now consider the first step step number one i equal to zero means consider index number zero as location two so here consider two nine three one eight as an array now compare i at zero location means value consider as a two means compare two equal to one here no two not equal to one so we can consider next step in sequence first you compare your value one with the first element two then you compare the value one with your next element nine then compare with three then compare with one then compare with eight like this so second step consider i equal to one index equal to one now consider array same 29318 now consider the next location as a location one means consider value as a nine at i location so compare nine nine not equal to one that's why we move to the next location so consider the step number three as a i equal to two at this step consider the i location at second position means zero one two position now consider the value as a three and our goal is find one so three not equal to one so consider the next step i equal to four i equal to three in step number four here consider the two nine three one eight now consider the next location as a value one so here we find our desired value at location zero one two and three so one value present in red color as a your final answer for i equal to three so element found at i index means i equal to three so here consider the linear search search element in sequential manner now consider the linear search algorithm consider input as a array a now output consider as a first index of element in a or minus one if not means element is present in a list then first index of your element means for example consider one available two times in an array so first one is your answer if the element is not present in a list then consider output as a minus one so consider this is an output now algorithm linear search for i equal to one to last index of a you can perform the operation if a of i equal to elements then return i otherwise return minus one so this is a simple algorithm of linear search the required element in the given array can be found at any location means for example at first location at intermediate location or at last location so here for example first possibility is two it is at the first position means two present at the first position so that's why we can say that best case now we understand what is the best case what is the first case and what is the average case using this linear search example so if you want to find the element two from the given array then consider two at present at first position so to consider as a best case minimum comparison is required is called the best case for example consider if you want to find the element 9 3 or 1 means any element between the first and last so that's why we can say that the average case average number of comparison is required is called the average case now third possibility is if you want to find the last element 8 or does not found at all means last position element or not available element in a list is considered as a first case so here consider maximum comparison is required is considered as a first case means n number of comparison is required
Next to topic is difference between best case, worst case, and average case. Now, first in best case, resource R is minimum. In average case, resource use is average. And worst case, resource use is in maximum. Second point is in best case, algorithms behavior under the optimal condition. Average case, algorithms behavior under the random condition. And in worst case, algorithms behavior under the worst condition. Third point, in best case, minimum number of steps or operation is required. In average case, average number of operation or steps is required. And in worst case, maximum number of steps or operation is required. Next point is, in best case, lower bound on the running time, average bound in the running time, and upper bound in the running time in worst case. Now, generally, best case not occurs in the real but average case and worst case, average and worst case performance are the most used in the algorithms analysis. So what is the complexity of best case? C based equal to 1. What is the complexity of average case? C average equal to n plus 1 divided by 2 and C first equal to a. So here consider worst case complexity equal to a. Now another example is number sorting. Suppose you are sort the number in ascending or increasing order. Your task is arrange the number in ascending or descending order. Our here our task is arrange the number in ascending order. Already we discussed the one example for the your searching element. Here consider the sorting element. The initial arrangement of the given number can be any of the following three orders. Means your given data is in any of the three order. First order consider as a number are already in required order. Means consider as a number. Given number is already in ascending order. For example, 5, 9, 12, 23, 32 and 45. So this is considered as a best case. No change is required. Consider as a best case. Now second condition is number are randomly arranged initially means here consider the all element are not sorted or all element are not in reverse order so some element are present in proper place and some element are not in proper place so this consider as a random arrangement so this is considered as a second case some number will change their position means consider as an average case now third possibility is number are initially arranged in descending order or decreasing order means consider as a 41 32 23 12 9 and 5 decreasing order so arrange this element in ascending order consider as a worst case because all the numbers will change their position this is considered as a worst case now in best case worst case and average case comparison if we consider the three example first is linear search second is book finding and third one is sorting now linear search means search the element from your array book finding means find the book from the your given list and sorting means arrange the data in ascending or descending order using the sorting algorithm so here first consider best case in linear search what is the best case element present at the first position in book finding what is the best case the first book is your target book and what is the sorting already sorted list consider as your best case now average case means in linear search element is at any of the middle position consider as a linear search average case in book finding any book in between first and last and in sorting consider the randomly arranged data as a average case of sort now in worst case of linear search element at the last position or not present in the list consider as a worst case of linear search in book finding consider the last book as a worst case and in sorting sorted in reverse order consider as a sorting worst case in today's video lecture i will discuss about the what is the best case worst case and average case using the some example like sorting example or consider as a searching example thank you for watching this video